Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about how to find the distance between the circumcenter and the centroid of a triangle. Let's suppose we have a triangle ABC where the angle BAC is denoted by uppercase A radian, angle ABC is denoted by uppercase B radian and angle ACB is denoted by uppercase C radian and also the side length AB is denoted by lowercase c units, side length BC is denoted by lowercase a units and side length AC is denoted by lowercase b units. That's the standard notation for any triangle. Next, I'm going to draw the orthocenter, the circumcenter and the centroid of this triangle. Here I have drawn a couple of altitudes and their point of intersection which has been denoted by uppercase H that is the orthocenter of this triangle. Next I am going to draw the circumcenter of this triangle and here I have drawn a couple of perpendicular bisectors and their point of intersection has been denoted by uppercase O that is the circumcenter of this triangle. Next I am going to draw a couple of medians to find out the centroid of this triangle and here we have the centroid which has been denoted by uppercase G and let's assume that that is the centroid of this triangle. So we have been able to locate the orthocenter, the centroid and the circumcenter of this triangle. Next I am going to join these three points by a straight line and from a previous video we know that these three points will be on the same straight line and also we know that the centroid divides this line segment in a ratio of 2 is to 1 that means here HG will be 2 portions and GO will be 1 portion. I have shared the link in the description, feel free to watch that video and there I have proved that the centroid divides this line segment in a 2 is to 1 ratio. Now in this video we are going to calculate the length of GO. For us to be able to calculate the length of GO, we already know the length of HO from another video that I just posted few days ago and I have shared the link in the description of that video as well. Feel free to watch that video and from that video we know that HO is equal to R times square root of 1 minus 8 times cosine of A times cosine of B times cosine of C. Now what is R? Well R is the circumradius of this triangle. That's the uppercase R, that's the usual notation for circumradius radius and as I mentioned I have already created another video where I have proved that the centroid divides this line segment into 2 is to 1 ratio. So here HG would be 2 portions and GO will be 1 portion that means GO will be 1 third of HO and that can be written as 1 third of R times square root of 1 minus 8 times cosine of A times cosine of B times cosine of C which is actually the value of HO that is R times that quantity and 1 third of that will be equal to GO because G divides the line segment into 2 is to 1 ratio. That means GO is to GH that will be 1 is to 2 or in other words we can say HG is to GO will be 2 is to 1 and from there we can say then definitely GO will be one third of HO. So this is one form for the value of GO which is the distance between the centroid and the circumcenter and we are also going to try and convert it into another form. So let me make a note of that that this is form number one. Now let's see how we can convert this into another form. Now if we take a square of GO on both sides then we can say that GO squared would be equal to R squared over 9 times 1 minus 8 times cosine of A times cosine of B times cosine of C and then this can be written as R squared over 9 times 1 minus I am going to borrow a 2 right here so I am going to say this is 4 times 2 times cosine of A times cosine of B times cosine of C and if you look at this portion right here 2 times cosine of A times cosine of B can be written as cosine of A plus B plus cosine of A minus B and that's exactly what I have done here. So I have written the same expression as R squared over 9 times 1 minus 4 times cosine of A plus B plus cosine of A minus B times cosine of C. Next I am going to write pi minus C in place of A plus B because we know that A plus B plus C is equal to pi radian so A plus B can be written as pi minus C radian. So we can write it as R squared over 9 times 1 minus 4 times cosine of pi minus C in place of A plus B I have written pi minus C and then plus cosine of A minus B and whole times cosine of C. Now what is cosine of pi minus C? Well cosine of pi minus c will be actually equal to negative cosine of c. So we can write it as r squared over 9 times 1 minus 4 times negative cosine of c plus cosine of a minus b whole times cosine of c. 
and next I'm going to multiply each of those terms there inside the innermost parenthesis by the cosine of C. So let's do that. So if we remove that innermost parenthesis then we can write it as R square over 9 times 1 plus cosine square of C minus 4 times cosine of A minus B times cosine of C. Next I'm going to replace the rightmost cosine of C with cosine of pi minus A plus B. So if we do that then we can write it as R squared over 9 times 1 plus 4 times cosine squared of C minus 4 times cosine of A minus B times cosine of we can write this as pi minus A plus B because we know that A plus B plus C is equal to pi radian so C can be written as pi minus A plus B. Now cosine of pi minus A plus B can be written as negative cosine of A plus B. So then this expression is going to convert into something like this R squared over 9 times 1 plus 4 times cosine squared of C minus 4 times cosine of A minus B times negative cosine of A plus B because cosine of pi minus any angle is equal to negative cosine of that angle. And if we simplify this we can write it as R squared over 9 times 1 plus 4 times cosine squared of C plus 4 times cosine of a plus b times cosine of a minus b. Next we are going to convert cosine of a plus b times cosine of a minus b into another form and in fact we know that cosine of a plus b times cosine of a minus b is actually equal to 1 minus sine square of a minus sine square of b. If you expand those two cosines and you multiply them ultimately you will arrive at this value which is 1 minus sine square of a minus sine square of b. And next I am going to convert cosine square of c into 1 minus minus sine squared of C form. So we can write it as R squared over 9 times 1 plus 4 times 1 minus sine squared of C. That's the Pythagorean identity. We know that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. So cosine squared of theta can be written as 1 minus sine squared of theta and that's exactly what I'm doing here. And then also we have 4 times 1 minus sine squared of A minus sine squared of B. And now let's remove the inner parenthesis. So we can write it as R squared over 9 times 1 plus 4 minus 4 times sine squared of C plus 4 minus 4 times sine squared of A and minus 4 times sine squared of B and from here we can write it as R squared over 9 times we have 1 plus 4 plus 4 so we have 9 total there so we can say this is 9 minus 4 times sine squared of A minus 4 times sine squared of B and minus 4 times sine squared of C and next I am going to remove this parenthesis and see how that looks so that will look like R squared over 9 times 9 minus R squared over 9 times 4 times sine squared of A plus 4 times sine squared of B plus 4 times sine squared of C and so the first term becomes R squared and then in the second term I am going to multiply R squared inside so I will write it as 1 over 9 times 4 times R squared times sine squared of A plus 4 times times R squared times sine squared of B plus 4 times R squared times sine squared of C and now if you think about it 4 times R squared times sine squared of A is actually A squared because from the sine law we know that A over sine A is equal to B over sine B is equal to C over sine C is equal to 2 times circumradius and from here if we simply look at A so we can say A is equal to 2 times R times sine of A and if we take a square on both sides that will be A squared equals 4 times R squared times sine squared of A and similarly Similarly, b squared will be equal to 4 times r squared times sine squared of b and c squared will be equal to 4 times r squared times sine squared of c. So here in place of 4 times r squared times sine squared of a, I am going to simply write a squared and then for the second term I will write b squared and for the third term I will write c squared. All of that within the parenthesis there, right? So this can be written as r squared minus 1 over 9 times we are going to write a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And this this is actually OG squared. Think about it. We are deriving the value here for OG squared. So let me write it here. On the left hand side of this line, I have denoted that this is actually OG squared, which turns out to be R squared minus 1 over 9 times A squared plus B squared plus C squared. So what would be OG? Well, let me try to write it here. So we can say then OG will be equal to square root of R squared minus 1 over 9 times A squared plus B squared plus C squared and that is the second form for the value of OG and let me make a note of that and this is actually form number 2. 
So when solving a problem, depending on what kind of information we have been provided, we can either use form number 1 or form number 2. Both of them are pretty handy. I hope everything made sense. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.